everybody and welcome to the channel. It's Paul Yester here. And well, Dead by Daylight put out an article about the designing of the dredge and a couple of you have asked me to read through it. I know that you prefer to have this read to you rather than read it yourself. And I'm happy to oblige. So let's go ahead and read through this. The tweet says, learn all about how the Dead by Daylight game design team brought the dredge to life. And when we click the link, it takes us over to the official Dead by Daylight website with this article, Designing the Dredge. A conversation with Dead by Daylight's lead game designer. In Dead by Daylight's new chapter, Roots of Dread, the new killer is the Dredge, a formless mass of twisted limbs writhing in the shadows. The Dredge is a manifestation of darkness itself. A uniquely frightening figure, it was imperative that the dredge captured the spirit of a monster lurking beneath your bed. And while Dead by Daylight is most certainly a horror game, conjuring such a unique flavor of fear presented an exciting challenge for the game design team. For one, its reign of darkness power shrouds the map in a pitch black state, turning simple navigation into a matter of life and death. During this supernatural nightfall, visibility becomes severely limited, making it so that survivors can only see what's directly in front of them. While this certainly brings an exciting new horror element to Dead by Daylight, such a dramatic visual change was not without a few behind-the-scenes hurdles. Now, if you saw anybody play the new chapter in the PTB, I was told after the fact that the uh, the reign of darkness was bugged and it should have been darker than that so i'm really interested to see what the actual reign of darkness looks like um come june 7th when the roots of dread dlc drops because that doesn't sound like it's going to be very easy all right so here we go hello darkness my old friend one of the first things and this is something people don't often consider is that we must think about the technical feasibility of our desired experience, explains Patrick Harris, Dead by Daylight's lead game designer. Lighting levels and visibility levels are a very technical challenge, and when conceptualizing a power like the dredges, we have to consider that. Okay, so my super beast gamer rig computer can do this, but can a lower spec computer? Or some of the older consoles? Everything has its limitations, he notes. It becomes an interesting discussion between the tech side and the design side. The design side says we want an experience like this, and the tech says doing exactly what you just said will have implications on performance, so we work together to find a balance. It's tricky to get the lighting and visibility to change dynamically in a match, maintain performance, and adhere to the original design desire. On top of that, you must then consider the feedback we get from our playtests, which feature a wide range of player skill. I'm not the most amazing survivor player in the world by my own admission, laughs Patrick. When I faced the dredge, I found the darkness to be very tough, especially in early iterations. A lot of the less experienced survivors felt that. On the other side, many of the high skilled players had each map memorized and you could throw a blindfold on them and they could still find the generators. Hmm, interesting. We had to find a balance where the high skilled players were scared and impacted by the power, while the newer players were not completely overwhelmed, he continues. That was a tricky one, and that's where the idea of having the dredge's aura be visible during the darkness came from. Aw, oh, if they weren't standing out like glow in the dark, that would be way, way harder. It helps strike a balance between the two groups while maintaining the fear factor. It also helps that when you see the dredge, it's absolutely terrifying. It's a really good design, I have to say. <laughs> Nothing I ever would have thought we would see from Dead by Daylight, for sure. Lockers. That's only the beginning. The dredge has the ability to teleport to any locker across the map, granting it... Uh, an oppressive level of mobility and it should and should it teleport to a locker while survivor is inside some things are better left to the imagination it's like you're inside the locker tap on the shoulder hello we wanted a killer that jumped out of lockers and scared survivors for a while explains patrick something that takes a pillar of safety and flips it on its head there's three lockers in this room do i really want to go here this is going to be the killer that makes lockers scary. 
Survivors can take protective measures by locking a locker door, but there's one problem. You can only lock those lockers once, says Patrick. It's not necessarily a great idea to run around and lock them all. If you do that at the beginning of the game, the dredge is going to smash, e smash each lock and you'll be in for a bad time. Slow your roll and be mindful. Finding Balance. Dead by Daylight is a multiplayer asymmetrical game where two sides must go head to head and striking an effective balance between killer and survivor is an integral part of the game design team's toolkit. At the same time, both sides are made up of a wide ranging spectrum of player skill, making it difficult to predict how the community will respond to a killer's competitive potential. There's Hattie Core. You never know which tier. <laughs> oh no, we're gonna rate the killers by tiers again. You never know which tier a killer will end up being until the community gets their hands on it, muses Patrick. Sometimes it's because they figure out how to do something you never thought of. Sometimes they do something they shouldn't be able to do, he laughs. And lots of times we're just impressed with the creativity. It always helps when a killer's power allows for the possibility of mind games, raising the skill ceiling and inviting a good old-fashioned battle of wits. While the dredge's power allows for map-wide darkness and locker teleportation, there's an additional ability survivors must fear. The Remnant. When the dredge charges its power, a static remnant is created, and from there the killer has two options. Teleport to a locker, or instantly snap back to the remnant. Consider a scenario where a survivor you're chasing is running toward a locker. You prepare to cut them off by teleporting to a locker up ahead, charging your power and creating a remnant. After a few seconds, they realize what you're planning and they decide to double back by running towards you. And rather than teleporting to the locker as originally planned, you snap back to your remnant and instantly resume the chase. Yeah, this remnant play, I see a lot of killers on the PTV who were putting their remnant down in the middle of a longer loop. And when you would go around the loop, then they could decide to either continue to chase you or they could go to their remnant and pop back into that and cut you off. So that made it very uh, dicey to loop this killer, I will say. Here's some pictures of the Garden of Joy main house. When we initially did the when we initially did the initial play tests with the dredge, we didn't have the remnant, recalls Patrick. It was one of the last parts of the power to be added. It added a level of mind gaming to the dredge that wasn't present, making for some interesting gameplay during chases. That's an exciting level of decision making. It's clear that the game design team is excited for players to get familiar with the dredge, whose immersive gameplay and unsettling unsettling visual design brings a new style of horror to the entity's realm. This harmonious union of gameplay and character has become one of the game's beloved pillars, and Patrick is keen to praise the work of Dead by Daylight's killer designers. The killer designer we have working on the dredge, Yannick Nevu, apologize if I butchered the pronunciation, has been on the team longer than I have, he notes. He is an absolute expert at his craft. I won't take any credit on the dredge, Yannick, absolutely killed it he constantly impresses everyone on the team with his fantastic killer designs embody the fear itself as the dredge in dead by daylight's brand new chapter roots of dread available on june the 7th and that's it so yeah the the mind game play with the remnant in loops you might want to become a w gamer on some of those shorter loops because you are going to go down it's tough it's tough and then you have the extra element of thinking, okay, so I'm doing this loop and they put down the remnant. Is there a locker behind me too? So then they have multiple options that they can chase you, go to the remnant, go to the locker behind you. It, it becomes quite a bit to keep in consideration when you're running this killer. And if they're going to increase the darkness too, the way I heard that the PTB wasn't as dark as it's going to be on release, this is going to be a scary killer to face. So... Looking forward to it. I plan on streaming uh, pretty well all day on Tuesday, June the 7th, when Roots of Dread drops, and I'll be giving out probably 20 DLC keys to those who are in attendance on my Twitch stream. Uh, random draws for the giveaway. Any Everybody's welcome. 
So I hope to see you there, but that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for the time you spend here with me on my channel. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to take care of each other in and out of the fog, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. It's a Jen Rush life for us. It's a Jen Rush life for us. Set a hiding, we do gens. Set a randoms, we got friends. It's a Jen Rush life.